1785, the Oath of the Horati was exhibited at the Paris Salon, an important exhibition put on by the French Academy. Everyone loved David's painting. As an allegory about loyalty, it had an excellent theme for a population heading towards revolution. The Oath of the Horati depicts three sons swearing an oath on their swords, held high by their father, that they will defend Rome to their death. As a paradigm of neoclassical art, it has several important characteristics. Firstly, the story was taken from the classical tale recorded by the Roman writer Livy, stylistically the central point of the perspective scheme is the hands of the protagonists reaching out to take the oath, thus underlining the main theme. Strong colors are used in the foreground with a stark contrast between light and shade, and the background reveals an architectural scene. The painting depicts a morally uplifting story promoting civic duty over the personal, reflecting the values of the Enlightenment and neoclassical idealism. The Paris Salon of 1789 opened after the storming of the Bastille and the start of the French Revolution. David's The Lictors Bring to Brutus the Bodies of His Sons had been banned by the royal court because of its revolution-supporting theme. It portrays Brutus, who had led his country to successfully overthrow the king and establish a republic, grieving after having condemned his sons to death for the sake of his country. The theme of the painting regards civic values, self-sacrifice, duty to the nation, and reason. The public protested so much at the ban that David was finally allowed to exhibit it. But art students kept a constant watch over it to protect it from the king's supporters. Jacques-Louis David joined the revolutionary parliament called the National Convention, and voted for the King's execution in 1793. When the famous revolutionary and David's good friend Jean-Paul Marat was murdered in his bathtub by a fanatical royalist, Cordai, David was commissioned by the Parliament to paint him as a martyr, and he did. The dark background underlines the warm, sympathetic light that floods the body. The position of the body deliberately recalls images of Christ's deposition. The fallen arm holds a pen, while the bloodied knife is half in the shadows, suggesting the rationalist theory that pen is mightier than the sword. The death of Marat is indeed one of his masterpieces. After the French Revolution, David was in charge of the world of French art. Art was taught in schools and shown in museums, and he made sure it all supported revolutionary ideas. He also had the French Academy closed down, claiming it was against the Republican ideals of democracy and equality, and that it encouraged snobbery. Post-Revolution, Jacques-Louis David became Napoleon's official painter. His art glamorized Napoleon's heroism, the success of his military campaigns, and the splendor of his court. For example, his Napoleon at the St. Bernard Pass is a portrait of Bonaparte crossing the Alps on his way to do battle. 
Napoleon had actually made this journey on a mule, but David painted him proudly sitting on a horse. The painting is a clear attempt at figuring Napoleon as a successor of great, the empire builders of the past, such as Charlemagne and Hannibal, whose names are engraved on the rock in the foreground. Swirling around him, the natural elements offer no resistance to his progress, showing by his finger pointing to forward. In 1816, after Napoleon was ousted from power, David had to leave France and move into exile because he had publicly stated that he would become an enemy of the state if Napoleon were ever removed from power. He went to Belgium. In February 1824, he was run into by a horse-drawn cab while walking home from the theater. He died from his injuries almost a year later on December 29, 1825. Le peuple en ce jour sans cesse se répète Assaïra, assaïra, assaïra Malgré les mutins, tout réussira Nos ennemis, confiants, 